Hi there, and thank you very much for joining us on this Legacy Wealth Weekly Web Chat. My name is Jen, the Head of Marketing, and joining me on the show today, we've got our Head of Investments, Mr. David Ager, and our Head of Planning, Mr. Alex Kanaski. Gents, welcome to the show, and I guess because our two other guests couldn't make it, so we'll make do with the both of you. I've never been so insulted in all my life, Jen. <laughs> oh, Dave, I'm sure you've been insulted more than that, but... I'm not sure if today's topic is, is an insult, but it's very relevant as well. And here's the question. Now, will financial planners advisors lose their jobs? And are they, i.e. the both of you, relevant in today's landscape? Good. I think it's a great question, Jen, actually. I'm not, I'm not planning to answer it, but I think it's a great question. <laughs> So by no, not answering, you get to keep your job. Is that how it works? Yeah, fair point. Um, no, it is a great question. Um, and I mean, we all need to constantly reevaluate our proposition uh, to ensure we remain relevant. And I think there's a number of factors that at the moment, you know, we need to, um, we need to ensure that we're addressing. And one of them, obviously, is this idea that a number of things that maybe traditionally financial advisors have done in the past can be automated now. And that can create huge numbers of efficiencies um, and almost mean that the inefficiency is the human being. And, and so certainly that's one, that's one element of disruption, yeah. Um, I suppose the other thing as well is over the past few years, if not decades, the, the nature of financial advice has changed significantly. Uh, and I guess that's maybe something we can talk about in a bit more depth now. Okay, so Alex, uh, maybe this is a question for you as well, and for Dave. What do financial planners advisors need to do to stay relevant in today's landscape? So I think, as Dave mentioned, the role of the financial advisor has changed over the last few decades. And, and to some degree, that depends on the market in which you're talking about. The more established frameworks of the UK and Australia, as, ex as examples, uh, made those changes best part of a decade ago. And in other offshore jurisdictions, Southeast Asia, Middle East, uh, some of those changes are being led by forerunners, but the regulation perhaps isn't, isn't driving it quite so efficiently at the moment. And that difference in the role boils down to being um, an intermediary between a client and a financial institution and effectively enabling those two to transact with each other versus now actually implementing client focused advice and bespoke models for for the best outcomes that, that we can as as advisors so he thinks when the industry um evolves do you think that advisors are evolving enough to keep up with the trends I, I would say, yeah, I, I think the industry is addressing it and it needs to, it absolutely needs to, um, and we're getting there. Uh, let's just acknowledge a couple of things as soon as we can. And you know, one of those things is the financial services industry and financial advisors have got a pretty bad reputation. We, we've, we've not helped ourselves um, in some of the ways that we've interacted with clients and especially in the remuneration process. Our incentive structures have not aligned us to do the best thing for clients historically. And, you know, the sooner we acknowledge that, the sooner we can start dealing with it and the sooner we can start getting clients to, to trust us again to do the right thing. Yeah, so I touched on this in the, in the last video we did, Jen, and it's also, you know, a basis for, for the article series that I'm, I'm putting out at the moment, is that the interest of the financial advice has to be based around the client and their individual circumstance. And the, the transactional remuneration model doesn't lend itself to that purpose. So ensuring that the client is at the center of the advice and not the remuneration based on the solution that's offered is the only way forward to, to, to negate some of these negative um, perceptions of financial advisors and the market as a whole. So if you... Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Dave. Okay, I was just going to say, you know, I've been in financial services now for 25 years. And, you know, when I started, it was basically, how can I find a way to sell a product? That, yeah. that was what the, we were basically representing. One way or another, we were representing a financial institution with a product to sell. Um, 
fast forward, the industry is moving towards this idea that our job is basically to find out what it is that a client wants to do with their lives and find ways to support that. Um, and I think that's good. Uh, you know, I, I think we're getting there. I think the financial services industry is, is on the right path, but we've got work to do. So if you can encapsulate everything in terms of how a financial planner advisor should stay relevant in today's landscape, what are the five key points we should take away from this? The five things that they can do today to stay relevant. Obviously, I'll start with the first one. It's service, isn't it? Bespoke service. Yeah, I think it is. It's it's very important when we speak to clients that they feel like they're getting something that's bespoke for them. And I don't necessarily mean that one product can't be used or one solution can't be used for multiple clients, but the way in which that solution is presented and taken on board has to meet the individual circumstance of the client. So that's one service. Then would you say two is transparency? Yeah, absolutely, Jen. Yeah, I'd say the first thing you need a client, you know, if I was to give clients advice on, on how to choose a financial advisor, I would say, first of all, how do you get paid? Show me, demonstrate to me that the way you get paid is going to incentivize you to do a good job for me. And it's your job as an advisor to do that. Um, and, you know, I, 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 I am being optimistic. I think the industry is going in the right direction, but there's a huge number of um, advisory practices that are still not working in a way that incentivizes their clients, um, sorry, their advisors to do a good job for their clients. And one is, is transactions. So if you get paid based on um, executing a transaction on behalf of your client, then it, it's hard to um, really believe that that's going to lead to the best, it's going to create the best interest of the client, uh, or a solution that will be in the best interest of the client. Um, all, all, all remuneration models are conflicted to some extent, I would argue, but there are definitely ones which are easier to manage that conflict. Sorry, that was like, that was one answer that probably, can we say that was three? Because you wanted five, didn't you? Alex giving you one. Can that, that, that be will three? Be. So and if, I, if I were one to, more to go. If I were to list it down, there would be just one more to go. So we talk about it. So it's service, transparency, trust, talk about transactions. And should I leave the final one with Alex or, or Dave, you're going to jump in and answer for him again? He's such a bully, you know? <laughs> so passionate about this subject. Is it? <laughs> So just the final word, so in terms of service, Me, Alex, Alex. trust, transactions, Alex. and one last thing in terms of uh, how do they stay relevant in today's landscape. Okay, well, I'll throw another one in then. Um, <laughs> sorry, Alex. Um, <laughs> I mean, technology is part of it as well. So uh, Alex, I'm sure you've got something else to add, so we can make it one more again. But, um, you know, financial planning software can help people to, to understand. I mean, they're just, it's just a tool. It's not maybe the focus, but you know, that kind of software can be very relevant and helpful in, in, in ensuring clients meet their goals. Yeah, for me, it's about delivering some form of education to our clients as well. So I think there's an element of, that comes back to both service, trust and transparency, is educating our clients in what we're doing and why the solutions work, but not just at a very high level, but actually going into some of the nitty gritty, which is why the level of reporting that we produce for our clients is, is probably over and, over and above the vast majority in the industry. Gents, many thanks for that. So just to recap the five points, what's important is about service, transparency, trust. I would say you talk about education and technology as well. So guys, many thanks for that. Take it easy. And Alex, the next time probably I'll just get you alone so you have a chance to answer some of these questions. I'd appreciate that, Jen. <laughs> and Dave, many thanks. Yeah, I, I, unfortunately, this is not an hour long show, so I've got to cut you off right here. Oh, nothing to say Whatever. now. That's the first. So, if you guys have any questions for us, you can find us on LinkedIn or you can log on to our website at legacywealth.sg. We'll be more than happy to answer your questions. For myself, Jen, Alex, and Dave, take care and we'll see you. Bye. <laughs>